Yes, don't be stuffy, Warlog, said another. Besides, what else can we do with her? Eat her, suggested the yellowish-green dragon in a bored tone. No proper princess would come out looking for dragons, Warlog objected. Well, I'm not a proper princess, then, Simmering snapped. I make chairs jubilee, and I volunteer for dragons, and I conjugate Latin verbs, or at least I would if anyone would let me. So there. <laughs> Simmering is definitely not your proper princess. Unlike her six older sisters, she doesn't have the long golden hair that all proper princesses have. Hers is black, and she doesn't have their sweet disposition. She is strong-willed and very stubborn. And much to her parents' frustration, Simmering would much rather be learning fencing or cooking or <laughs> how to conjugate Latin verbs alongside magic. She would much rather learn any of those than the proper princess lessons of dancing, embroidery, and all of the etiquette. <laughs> When her parents decide that it's time for her to get married to a very proper prince, Simmerine decides it's time to run away. She doesn't come to this decision rashly, however. She is an intelligent princess. First, she tries to talk to her parents, and when they don't relent, she tries to talk to the prince, and when he's too proper to relent, she calls on her fairy godmother. Her fairy godmother, though, is on the side of her parents. Fortunately for her, a talking frog overhears Simmerine's plight. He directs her on where to go to get help for her issues. At the end of her destination, she reaches a cave. At first she can't see and she's a little frightened as whoever is in there starts talking about eating her. She soon realizes though that it's dragons. <laughs> Unlike Toothless the Dragon from How to Train Your Dragon, these dragons do eat people and they keep princesses captive. So it's a minor social status symbol. Sumerine decides to stay with them. She ends up with Kazul. They get along fabulously and Simrine is getting to learn all sorts of magic and getting to practice her Latin. But she also has to trick a lot of knights and princes as they keep coming to rescue her. Even though she doesn't need rescuing, they don't get the hint. <laughs> Simrine also has to deal with a few wizards. There's a witch, a mystery, and dragonish plots afoot. Along the way, she makes a friend, she lifts some curse, she has to do with the djinn, and she has all sorts of adventures as Simri learns about dealing with dragons. <laughs> this book is the first one of the Enchanted Forest Chronicles, and it's by Patricia C. Reed. These books are fractured fairy tales, so it's basically like Shrek where you take bits and pieces of fairy tales, break them all apart, use whatever pieces you want, and in Patricia C. Reed's style, you kind of make fun of some of those famous fairy tale tropes or famous fairy tales even. It's a lot of fun and enjoyable by anyone who likes fantasy, dragons, strong female princesses, heroines who are actually witty and intelligent, as well as stubborn. <laughs> and while this book is one of four, it's works just fine as a standalone. And <laughs> I hope you enjoyed as much as I have. My name's Lisa Rommel and have fun reading.